Hey, got a question from uh, Connor about, um, he said he's been helping out a couple of his buddies and clients with idea validation and is wondering if there's a, a business there. You know, I, idea validation as a service or customer development as a service. Um, it's certainly possible, but it has some big challenges. And I think that the whether this works or not is completely dependent on whether you can overcome these challenges. So the the, the biggest one in my experience is that no one will believe you if you tell them that their idea is not going to work. Uh, they're going to fire you. They're going to argue over your bill, potentially. They're certainly not going to recommend you. And then they're going to go out and do the validation themselves. So they say they're hiring you to validate. But in practice, what I've seen is they're really hiring you to bring them good news. Um, because just imagine you're the, uh, you're the founder. You've got an idea that you really care about or it's a spin-out product for your existing business and you're very experienced. And you bring this person in and you're like, hey, can you go you know, do... And in your head, if you're outsourcing it as a business owner, you're kind of considering it busy work. And then that person comes back and says, nah, it's not worth doing. It's a very rare person indeed. And it requires a lot of trust to be like, oh, okay, thanks. You just saved me you know, X months. And to just throw that idea away. What most people do is they go, well, you're bad at your job. Like you obviously didn't talk to the right people or you didn't ask the right questions. So if there was a way to overcome that trust and belief factor such that the you could do it properly and the business leader would totally believe you, then yes, I think you would find a lot of clients and could add a lot of value. Um, in practice, I haven't yet seen someone who's able to overcome that stuff properly. Um, so to me, that that's the whole challenge. It's like, can you do that? Um, and obviously the big consulting firms and stuff, they try to do this. It's like the research and development firms. The, In some ways, the um, I would say the design thinking and user experience community has done the best job of it. Uh, and they use a lot of workshops and where they kind of work with the team, but they still insist that the client's in the room to hear the bad news themselves. So... There's some definitely some approaches, but it would take kind of a bit of a value proposition innovation and business model innovation in order to uh, to overcome those issues. What else would be a, a, a challenge? Um, every company, like when when bigger companies, and if you, if your clients were larger companies with bigger budgets or even you know mid-sized companies, they start to have a reporting hierarchy. And one of the challenges about customer development style validation is that it tends not to look very good on a chart. Um, you're getting messy, unstructured data. And so when you try to reduce it into a one pager, it loses all of its interesting edges. Uh, with customer development, like the, the, the magic is in the details, it's in the emotions, it's in the quirks, it's in these little ticks and hesitations. And so depending on the client, and again, this can be overcome, but I'm, I'm just flagging it up as a challenge. Um, depending on the client, like they're like, oh yeah, give me the one pager or like, ooh, is that statistically significant? And they're, they're going to ask you these questions, which are going to prevent you. It's going to shave off the interesting edges from the, the, the data you're gathering. Um, if you could overcome that really valuable, um, one other option might be, would be, so one would be to be very trust-based. So to focus on clients you have a long existing reputation with, and they, they kind of just trust you without question. Um, another option would be to, to do what the design thinkers do and treat it more as like empowering the team to more easily validate themselves, uh, bring them with you, do the meeting planning, set up the meetings yourself. So you're doing a lot of the legwork and the busy work, but ultimately they're in the room. Um, another option would be to um, find some, and I'm not sure what this would be, but you could potentially find either a business model, an industry or a product category, which is easier to validate convincingly. And then you could really specialize on that niche and it would allow you, I, and again, I don't know what this category would be, but it, it, it feels possible to me that the category exists. And if you found it, you could like, okay, I don't know how to validate everything, but I do know how to validate whatever. Um, low cost SaaS targeted at small businesses and freelancers. And so you could kind of build up a specialty and a niche. Um, this is something that Amy Hoy and Alex Hillman did really well with their course 30 by 500. They sort of said, we don't know how to help you start every business, but we do know how to help you start this certain type of SaaS business um, and bootstrap it and get it up to whatever, 150 grand a year. So yeah, niching down, focusing on tr really trusting relationships or helping them do it themselves. Those are the three that are top of mind for me. Um, but certainly doing validation as a service or custom as a service in kind of a naive way fails always. Um, so 
it's doable. There's huge demand. There's a lot of money. Um, you could also do it if you had no morals and were willing to be a full on charlatan and just take people's money and promise them the world and then fail. Uh, but I, I'm assuming that that's not the path you want to go. So I see three possibilities. Maybe you can figure out more. Um, if you can crack it, yeah, there, there's a lot of money and there's a very interesting uh, service as a business and possibly products, consulting, whatever. Uh, it could open up some really interesting bootstrapping businesses if you could crack it. Uh, cool. So that's a little bit different than the normal mom test questions that I answer, but you know, uh, anything I can help with, just shoot me a note and I will try to get you back an answer.